Hey y'all, welcome back to Coldplay Creations. A couple days ago, I posted a reel on Instagram about one of our Florida King snakes that just laid eggs. And we got a couple comments of you guys asking us, is there any relationship between a mother king snake and her young? And the truth of the matter is there is really none whatsoever. King snakes, like many other snake species, simply lay their eggs and then they wander off somewhere. The moment those king snakes hatch, they're on their own. However, there is a species of snake that in our opinion should win mother of the year. And that would be the Burmese python. So those of you guys who've been following us here on YouTube know that recently we've released a couple of videos highlighting the process of breeding our Burmese pythons. Now on our Instagram video we were pulling our eggs and putting them in an incubator. However the process is a little bit different with the Burmese python. The reason for that is because the Burmese python like many other python species were created with the ability to incubate their own eggs. When a python lays those eggs, the outer part of the egg has somewhat of a sticky substance. It allows those eggs to adhere to one another and they lay them and they form almost like an ice cream cone looking shape of eggs. The female python will then wrap her body around that entire clutch of eggs. She will actually regulate the temperature inside her coils to maximize the potential for those eggs to hatch. It's quite a fascinating uh, thing to see. Um, in our cages here in our facility, what, every now and then you'll hear the glass doors vibrate in their track. And what's causing that vibration is that that female python is literally taking her coils twitching. and shaking and twitching, raising the temperature up to make sure that those eggs have the ideal environment in which to develop. The other thing that they can do is, is uh, to release some moisture from their body and that raises the humidity. So many breeders of Burmese pythons will actually remove the eggs from the female, place them into an incubator and incubate them artificially. However, but we feel like since these animals were created with the ability to do it themselves, that's probably the most natural thing for them. So we want our females to do what they were naturally created to do. Now, saying that, we also have to provide them an environment in their cage which will allow them to do their part. By that, I mean that Burmese pythons have the ability to raise the temperature. They have the ability to raise the humidity. However, they don't have the ability to lower or the temperature or the humidity. Therefore, we want to keep our cages in about the mid 80 range. We want to keep our humidity around the mid 80 range as well, and that will allow the female to do her part. Now you do want to be careful around your Burmese python during this time because even though our Burmese python, Kiara, she's an absolute sweetheart. We've brought her to so many birthday parties. She's been around many children, but around this time of the year when she lays her eggs, she's a completely different snake. So when you open their cage, you want to be very careful that you're not too up close because you do not want to take a bite to the face from one of these pythons. So as you'll see in this next video clip, Burmese pythons absolutely have the ability to let you know both both by their behavior and by the sound that they don't want to be messed with. So something really interesting that I actually learned last year just from watching Kiara was the fact that she's intelligent enough to know when she has a bad egg in her clutch because she would be all coiled up on top of all of her eggs, but if one egg goes bad, she would exclude it from the rest of her pile. And we saw her do that last year with about two eggs, I want to say. It's almost as if these animals have an intelligence that would prove that they were designed by intelligence. Exactly. These things don't just happen by chance. Right. So one of the other things about Burmese pythons and the reason I believe these girls should get mother of the year is because of the extreme sacrifice that these pythons go through in order to ensure the survival of their own offspring. A character trait that it's too bad it's lacking in the human species in our culture today. But these females will literally sacrifice their own nourishment. For the entire process of incubating these eggs, they don't eat anything. Not only that, they barely move. They move just a little bit enough to take a drink of water every now and then. Otherwise, for up to three months, this python will lay in the exact same position 
coiled around those eggs and she won't take a single meal until she knows that her babies are safe and ready to explore the world on their own. All right, so finally after two to three months, we will notice that these eggs are about ready to hatch. Now, there's two things that we will notice that'll let us know that. Number one, the python will loosen her coils. She won't be wrapped so tight around it. She'll back off of them a little bit, and those eggs will start to sink in, at which time you'll start to see baby python heads poking out of those eggs. So they'll usually stay in that position with their heads out of the eggs, for usually about 24 hours before they emerge. During that time, we will remove carefully that female python and uh, we'll reward her with some good hearty meals and then we will separate those babies and get them taken care of. We'll probably update a couple videos for those of you guys who want to see that. Uh, we will post some, probably some short videos here on YouTube highlighting that process. So guys, we thank you for watching this video. We hope that you have found something educational, perhaps even entertaining in it that uh, you'd like. I should mention the fact that in our last video, we answered a question talking about where we get these hats that we wear. And uh, the folks from Outback Trading Company was not Nice enough to send Anna here this uh, Soro Cowgirl hat and uh, if you guys like that you can check them out at OutbackTrading.com they sell the hats that I wear the hats now that Anna wears and uh, I heard old Phil Billy Tubbillard even got a hat from Outback Trading Company. Yeah, I heard that too. Let's see what he has to say about that. That's right, old Phil Billy Tubbillard got a hat from them folks over there at the Outback Trading Company. This right here gonna make me the best dressed redneck in the whole trailer park. And it's 100% pure leather. Y'all to smell, it smells, smell, it smells good. And since it's old Phil Billy's job to keep you young whippersnappers in line, I need to point out the fact that you guys are filming a video about motherly instincts of pythons and Mother's Day was last month. This is June. You should have been doing a video on fathers for Father's Day. Okay, so what are you doing for Father's Day? Well, truth be known, I ain't got a father to celebrate. Old Phil Billy's dad, he done gone to that great trailer park in the sky. Oh, I'm sorry. You miss your dad? Well, of course. Well, if you had you know, something you wanted to say to him, what would it be? Well, I'd say, Dad, sorry we had you cremated. We really did think you were dead. We're gonna be discussing, well, that wasn't what I was gonna say. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Can't focus. Uh, my father's done went on to that great hillbilly sanctuary in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I brushed my teeth for this. Get on with it. Oh, really? It's about time. <laughs> Here, what? I'll start over again. Uh, no fewer. Uh, I'm, I'm getting gray beards off my chest. All right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's July, Prince. No, it ain't. It's June. Are we going to go with that? <laughs> That's... <laughs>